if the season premieres of The Flash and Legends of Tomorrow shared anything in common tonight, it's that neither did a particularly good job of paying off on their respective cliffhangers from last season. In the case of Legends, season 2 wrapped with a team confronting the fact that they seem to have broken time for good, resulting in a bizarre version of Los Angeles, where pyramids loom and dinosaurs run amok. But as with Flash, that dramatically different status quo didn't last long before the genie was stuffed back in the bottle. The difference, however, is that Arubicon made up for this abrupt return to normalcy with more of the zany fun that makes the series such a joy to watch in the first place. Not that there wasn't a certain degree of frustration in seeing that cool Cliffinger amount to a whole lot of nothing. I was excited at the prospect of a bold new direction for the show, one where the legends are tasked with putting a million shattered pieces of history back into place, one mission at a time. Instead, Rip Hunter and his newly formed Time Bureau did the work for them in the span of a few seconds. It's also a little bizarre to see such a wildly different take on Rip given where the series left him at the end of season 2. There was a real passing the torch moment between Sarah and Rip as the former formally took charge of the Wava Rider. Yet here, Rip seems to have decided he has no more use for the legends at all. I get that a lot more time has passed for him than Sarah since their last meeting, but this episode never justified his oddly cold and even hostile behavior towards his old team. The third and final point of frustration with this episode is the bizarre way Amaya was swept under the rug. It seems like a strange choice to have her decide in the season 2 finale to remain with the legends and choose love over destiny, only for her to abruptly vanish and return to the past in those missing six months. Maisie Richardson Sellers is still a series regular this season, so it's not as if the writers had to write her out of the picture. Just one more head-scratching storytelling decision to start off the new season. But again, the pros still vastly outweigh the cons with the series. Season 2 really perfected the tone for this series. It's a charming, goofy romp that's utterly confident about embracing its own silliness. And regardless of the actual plot mechanics, that light-hearted tone seems to have carried over completely intact. It was a lot of fun simply catching up with the various team members as they tried to live ordinary civilian lives and predictably failing at it. Sarah's short-lived stint as an employee of sinks, showers and such was especially amusing. The getting the gang back together approach made for a very enjoyable way to kick off the new season. And as much as Rip's new status quo is a strange shift for the character, there's definitely a lot to be said for the rivalry between the legends and their highly trained, snappily dressed replacements. The legends really are the Rodney Dangerfields of the Eroverse and it seems all too appropriate that they wouldn't get respect even from the organization they ostensibly inspired. This episode did a great job of showcasing just how dysfunctional this team of misfits and oddballs can be, while also reminding us that sometimes you need a chainsaw rather than a scalpel for those tricky situations.